Let's take a look at the screw part from chapter three. So this is gonna use a few new sketch techniques and a few different uh, feature techniques. So this is the part you can see on the screen. This is what you're gonna get when we're all finished. So I'll get that out of the way. I've got a basic sketch going on here. The one thing I want you to notice is that I have an origin down here. All of my lines are fully defined. I've got a center line going through the part. Now that's for a reason you wouldn't be able to extrude this part because it's not a closed sketch, but we're gonna revolve it so it happens to be okay. One thing I wanna show you, if you forgot, when you're doing revolved parts, you're doing the flat sketch, you wanna give diameter. So this is gonna be the head of a bolt. So when I go to sketch, smart dimension, I select this, then I select the center line and I move over here on the opposite side to give a diameter instead of a radius, okay? So I just drop it right there and we're all good. So go ahead and add all these dimensions in. When you're done, I'll exit the sketch. I'll go to the feature tab. I will go to revolve boss base, okay? And select the sketch that I want to revolve. So I recommend you come up here. We only have one sketch right now, but if you have 50 sketches, sometimes it's easier to select it here than to go through here and try to find it. So sketch one. So it's gonna give us a dialogue. Sketch is currently open. We want it to close the sketch. Computer is real smart. It's gonna just add a line where that center line is. So I hit yes, All right? And now we've got a revolve. So there's really nothing we need to do with this. Just make sure it's 360 degrees. So it makes a complete part. I'm just gonna hit the green check. So if we go look at this sketch, and right, say we needed to edit it, which we will, you can see where it adds a line in there for you. So while we're in the sketch, why don't we add the rounded head for this bolt, okay? First thing I'll do is get normal to it. So I'm gonna hit Control-1, and then I'll hit F to fill the screen. And then it's still cut off a little bit here. Let me maximize the part to the window of SolidWorks I'm working with, okay? So this is important to be able to go back into a sketch and edit a feature. You're not always going to get it right on the first time. So let me show you one more time. If I want to edit this revolve, I go into this sketch that's attached to the revolve, edit sketch, and now I can change this sketch. So what we want to do is add a tangent arc from this point right here to about right here. Okay. So going to go up to my arc. So we have center point, tangent, and three point. It defaults to center point. This is what you've been using if you've been putting in arcs. What I want to do, tangent, I'm going to select this point. And I'm going to come over here and just select a point on the side of that part. And I want to either right click and hit select or hit escape so it won't keep making arcs. Okay. The next thing I'll do is add dimensions in here. So we need a dimension for right here. This is going to be 50 thousandths of an inch. And then if you notice the, the closed sketch, that shaded area is gone. It's because it's got two closed sketches right now. The computer does not like it. So to get rid of this line and this line, Right. I can't just delete it, right? If I delete this line, it'll delete this down here too, which I don't want. I need this area of the part. So we're gonna use trim. Now there's a couple different kinds of trim. They're all over here. I prefer trim to closest. When you do trim to closest, it's gonna trim just that part of the line, okay? There's another kind of trim called power trim. Power, you just pull Right, so you can just go trim anything in your way. Anywhere this gray line crosses, it will trim out of the sketch. So the next thing we need is a radius for this. So I'm going to finish up with trim, smart dimension, add a radius. The book specifies 0.304 inches. And now we notice it's fully defined. 
If you have a blue line in here, you got to go back and retrace your steps. You've done something wrong. So exit out of the sketch, and then the feature will automatically update. Okay. So now we have to make the slots at the top of this screw that a screwdriver can fit into. So we're going to use extruded cut and circular pattern. Now we're cutting into the middle of the part. So when we do extruded cut, we're going to use the front plane. If you notice, the front plane goes straight through the part. So we're going to sketch on that plane. So I'll go to sketch, sketch. I've already had the front plane selected, so that's where I'm sketching right now. I'm going to hit control one so I get normal to the part. And I want to draw a little triangle right here. So I'm going to go to line. I'm going to float around until I find the middle of the part. See how it lights up. I'm going to go down a little bit, make sure that line is vertical, and then go horizontal until I find the edge of the part. And you should get a coincident relation and a horizontal relation showing up right next to your cursor. I'm going to click right there, and then I'm going to hit escape so it stops making lines. Now the next step, what I want to do is copy this silhouette. Okay, It won't extrude anything right now because it's not a complete shape. So the way we take silhouettes from one feature and use it on another sketch is with convert entities right here. So I click it, I'm going to select just that edge, make sure the edge lights up, and I'm going to hit the green check. So same problem again, we've got all this extra line that we don't need, right? Again, we're going to go to trim entities. I'll do power trim this time. Anywhere the gray line touches, it'll get rid of, okay? So get rid of those two lines. Now we're almost good to go. We just need one dimension on here. The book specifies 30 thousandths. If you notice all the lines are black, that means we're fully defined and good to go. So I'm going to exit the sketch. And if you notice, the sketch is inside of the part, right? That's exactly what we want. So now I'll go to Features, Extruded Cut. I can select that sketch, or better yet, I can come over here and select Sketch 2. So what we want is a mid-plane extrude cut because we drew this through the center of the part and these slots are gonna be symmetric. I'm gonna to go to direction, mid-plane, and the book specifies 50 thou thickness, okay? So that's all we need for that. I'm gonna hit the green check and we've got a cut going right through the middle of the part. So the next is a circular pattern. Remember, we need something to spin it around. So we're gonna to go to the eyeball, that little arrow next to it, and show temporary axis. So this is what we're gonna base that circular feed, uh, circular pattern on. So I'll go to my features tab, right? Linear pattern, hit the arrow, circular pattern. So it needs two pieces of information. It automatically selected that axis, but I'll get rid of it and show you how to do it from scratch. We select that axis, then we select the feature that we want to pattern. You could click on it here or click on it over here. So now we just want to make sure it's equal spacing. Sometimes the computer will default to instant spacing. So equal and just tell it how many you want. Right? In this case, we'll need four. And that's all we have to do with circular pattern. So the next step is just to add a fillet around this edge. So I'm going to go to the fillet feature, zoom in, select that edge. The book specifies a 10 thou radius. So I want to make sure I got a full preview so I can see what I'm doing and hit OK. We've got our radius. The next step is a chamfer on the bottom here. So I'll go to uh, chamfer feature right next to fillet. Again, I'm going to select this edge. 
I'll select 50 thou for the distance. So it's going to default to distance by angle, 45 degrees is what we want. We've got a nice preview, a full preview, just like the fillet. I hit green, check. The last bit of information is how to suppress features. So if I click on this chamfer and go here to suppress, it will not show the feature, right? See how it's grayed out? I could go back and unsuppress it. I can also roll back the feature. If I pull this up, it'll get rid of any features below it temporarily. Right? So there's reasons to use this. Uh, we'll get into it later, but just know that it exists. Sometimes you can accidentally drag this and wonder why your part isn't finished. This blue bar controls what features are shown. So that's it for the screw part from the homework. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. This video is part of a course in the Advanced Manufacturing Technology Program at Hudson Valley Community College. We have plenty of courses online, including this one. If you are interested in continuing your education, please go to hvcc.edu and see what might be available for you.